So, Mick Make Ma number 44. I've been to the dentist, I've got a really sore mouth, I'm cranky, but I've got a whole lot of stuff. Nice. Hey, Billy Papa, just hit it. Oh, hi, hello. Hi. Hi, Betsy, it's both hello. This is it, both hello. How about that? I had to have serious mouth, but it's not about that. This video is being sponsored by JLC PCB, who provides Mick with all his PCBs. They can produce one to six layer boards from 0.4 to 2 millimetre thickness. Track widths down to 3.5 mil via drill size down to 0.2 millimetres and can handle BGAs. What on earth is a BGA? controlled impedance, cutouts, gold fingers, and even offer a panelization service. You can get all that for only $2 for five PCBs in any color manufactured in 24 hours. Click on the link in the description below to check them out. <laughs> Click on the link in the description below to check them out. So, uh, let's crack open this one at random. If you saw my weekly roundup, I actually bought a couple of items from IC Station. This is a CIM800 breakout board, which is a nice little GSM module. I think I got two of these. No, I got three of them. No, I got four of them. Hang on. No, I got five of them. Okay. Hang on. This is another module. I must have been too happy with the button clicking. I don't know why I got six of them. I also got the 800C module in USB format, which is essentially the same as these modules, except it's plug and play. So let's crack one of these open. Now you're probably wondering why I bought a 2G SIM module. Now the reason is that, first of all, these are pretty cheap. And second of all, these little SIM modules actually perform a whole lot of really cool things. So these SIM 800Cs are based on a MediaTek MT6260 SOC. Um, that's a 32-bit ARM7 RISC processor. So what's really cool about it, if you remove all the 2G GSM rubbish, this particular module still actually is pretty good. So it's got Bluetooth and it can support up to four simultaneous connections, which is nice. And it's got a whole bunch of interfaces on it, like USB 1.1, which supports DMA, and all the typical GPIOs you'd expect, like ADC, DAX, UARTS, SDIO, Quad, SPI, ITC, etc. It's got a serial camera interface and parallel RGB 888 interface, video and image codecs, audio input output with onboard amplifier, along with voice codecs. Uh, what else has got? RTC, FM radio, lithium ion charge management with a whole bunch of overcurrent, over voltage, over everything protection. And also it's got 14 onboard LDOs that provide power to a whole lot of different peripherals like cameras and everything else. So putting aside all the 2G GSM that doesn't work anymore in most countries, this is actually still a pretty decent little module. I'm actually interested in peeling back uh, this module and seeing exactly what's inside it. So let's go over to the microscope and see what's underneath the can. So I've managed to pull the can off the top and the main sock is actually a MT6261MA and I can't really see much difference between the 6260 and the 6261. Maybe it's just slightly slower clock rate or faster clock rate, who knows what it is. So on the back, this particular IC is what appears to be an MP1482DS, which comes from monolithic power systems and it's a pretty simple DC step down switching regulator. Um, and this is there for pulling the 5 volt supply down to the 4 volts required for the module. And I don't know what this thing is. I don't know, MOSFET, LDO, um, who knows what it is. And on the top side, there's an RF transceiver, GSM, GPRS, RF transceiver module, which is <laughs> what's well, needed. So bang for your buck is still pretty good considering you get all those extra features like Bluetooth and everything else. So it'd be good to hack around with this. 
and see if I can actually get this to do something. I'm not going to do it in this mailbag. Uh, so that's something that I'm going to put on the back burner. I've got a whole ton of other projects I need to look at. So unfortunately these... Actually, I ordered a whole lot of other things. That's right. I ordered those USB thingies and also the digital load tester. I didn't get those. That's strange. Okay, I'm going to have to complain about that. Okay, next thing. Okay, so the next thing is a package coming from our mates over in New Zealand, the land of the long white cloud. So this comes from a company called Ingenuity Micro, and they've just come out with a new board called uh, Kia, and also Electron. They also sent me Electron Excel. Okay, let's crack these open. So this is the Kia, which is in a very familiar feather format, an Adafruit feather format. It's got an onboard STM32 F411, I believe, and ESP32 Pico D4, 8 megabit SPI flash. Of course, it also supports LiPo charging, it has onboard MicroPython, I believe, and also supports NetMF or C Sharp. And I believe they're also going to be supporting uh, Sagita which is a drag and drop plugin for Visual Studio by Pervasive Digital. Uh, let's fire this one up and see how we go. Now I'm actually waiting for some documentation from Ingenuity Micro to see uh, how to power it up and how to program it, but I might have a bit of a play around uh, before they send that documentation and see how far I get. Okay, soldering time. I'll need to find some headers now. So these particular headers are pretty good because they have a slight sort of bend in the top of the pin and allows it to hold it in securely when you solder. Oh, bugger. So I just realised I've cut myself again. I'm not sure how I do that. There you go. Luckily I have a lot of these things on hand. Okay, let's fire these up and see how they go. So these are the pre-release boards that have been sent to me from Ingenuity. I've been in contact with them and they've been sending me some documentation. Uh, they've got some NetMF libraries. So if you're a C Sharp fan, then the onboarding for this is pretty good. So let's give this one a whirl. Now both of them can work with either MicroPython as well as the Visual Studio uh, using the Net Micro Framework. So I thought this time instead of using MicroPython I might give Micro Framework a, a bash. So because I'm a Mac fan of course this is going to complicate things a little bit more. So I'm going to have to download the Visual Studio for Mac and also getting Xamarin which apparently is the complete OS SDK for .NET. So I ended up having a bit of a problem with the uh, NetMF framework and this is mainly because I'm a Mac OS X fanboy and all this sort of stuff works a whole lot better in Windows. So I'll have to leave this for another mailbag and I'll have to move on to another thing. So what's next? Okay, so the next one, I know this came from my mate down in Melbourne who runs a YouTube channel called Unexpected Maker and he's been wanting to send this to me for some time. So he's come out with a Tiny Pico, which is an ESP32 based breakout board. 
And it's a nice little board. And I know that he spent a considerable amount of time trying to get the design just right. It's one of those things, engineering, designing PCBs, there's always something that needs to be improved and tweaked. This is a sixth or seventh revision, I think. So that's a good sign. That uh, means he's been tweaking it and getting it right. So one thing I didn't realize is that he's not only just coming out with the tiny Pico board, but he's also coming out with a whole lot of different shields, which is nice. An audio shield, an RTC shield, a Grove I2C shield, a prototype shield, the tiny Pico expansion modules side by side, which is quite good. Nice, and he's also got a little 3D printed little doohickey. I guess that's to line things up. Nice, this is yet another thing I need to fire up and see how it goes. But before I do that, I need to crack open this one. So this is essentially an all-in-one unit that allows you to control a plain old toaster oven or convert a toaster oven into a reflow unit. So if you saw my last mailbag, you would have seen me test out a cheap toaster oven from Audi just to see if I could actually use that as the basis of a fairly small reflow oven. So this is the reflow master and it's essentially I'm not sure what it runs. I think it's a Sam D21 or something, or it's Tim32. It essentially allows you to control a toaster oven and convert it into a reflow oven, which is nice. So this is another one I need to check out, but I'll get onto the tiny Pico first. Okay, so let's solder up these tiny Picos. So it's a nice set of boards Sion has come up with. You can either have the tiny Pico like this and attach all these boards on top, sort of extend them out. If you use these type of headers, you can just keep going up and up and up or else you can chuck it into this side by side, which does pretty much the same thing and breaks out all the GPIOs across. So you can attach an RTC module or else a speaker module. You've got a prototyping area and also a Grove RTC board as well. Great idea and I think it's one of the smallest ESP32 based boards around. So let's go and fire it up and see how we go. All right, so let's uh, fire up a couple of examples. He's got a couple of examples here in the software library. He's got a tiny Pico helper library. Oh, YouTube subscriber library. Hmm. And he's got examples for MicroPython and also the Arduino IDE. Excellent, so let's fire one of these examples up and see how we go. Now I was going to show you how to set up the tiny Pico in the Arduino IDE, but I think Pretty much everyone has probably been through this several times. In fact, I've actually had multiple videos on how to do this. So I think I'll skip this bit. And of course I loaded up Sion's Tiny Pico helper library. And that produced a temperature from the ESP32, which is nice. Then I hooked up the RTC board, downloaded a library for accessing the RTC. And that just came up okay. I could change the time, date, to anything worked well, no issues. So one of the things Sion did mention that he's pretty flooded at the moment with getting all that sort of documentation and libraries and everything else up to speed. And I know he actually went out and bought a pick and place machine. So he's gonna be doing a lot of the work in house. So he's gonna be pretty busy for a, a long time, I'd say. So I won't go and test out all these other things like uh, the audio board and everything else. One issue I did come across is the switch for the audio board. Um, as I was lifting it out, I pulled the switch off. But anyway, I sent Sion an email and uh, he's going to look at fixing it up in his production runs. From what I can see so far, this is actually a really nice little product. If you're interested in getting a tiny little ESP32 that's been made by a pretty reliable guy, then consider backing the tiny Pico on crowd supply. So that's really good. As I was packing everything up, he's gone to the trouble of providing all this sort of documentation where 
Um, everything's all fairly simply laid out and gives you as much information as possible. If you're anything like me, which is someone who doesn't bother to read documentation properly, uh, then this is pretty good. Okay, so moving on, we've got the Reflow Master and I don't think I have time to really get this installed and up and running but I might be able to do a couple of tests on it uh, which would be good uh, so let's see what happens it's a pretty decent user interface he's built but really to test this I need to attach one of my SSRs to this and hopefully I can drive it and maybe if I can simulate the temperature but we'll see So this uh, particular oven has three controls. One which controls whether you've got the top element or the bottom element or both on. Uh, this is just a simple timer uh, which you can turn off. This is setting the temperature. I'll just set this up to the maximum temperature and have Sion's Reflow Master control this part of the switch which is just essentially the on and off. So the timer will be just largely useless but the rest of it will actually work. So just to show you how simple this particular toaster is, it's just using a very simple bimetallic strip as the temperature sensor and it's actually embedded sort of way into the container and not actually in the body of the oven. So that's actually a bit of a dodgy thing, but anyway. And my SSR that I've got is a 40 amp jobby which can switch to 40 volts with a 3 to 32 volt DC input. So 3 volts it's very much on the edge. I'm using 3.3 volts. That should be alright. I'm going to leave this thermistor at the top here just as a sort of a safety cutout if something goes wrong. But then really the next thing I need to do is get some thermal matting which I'll need to lay on the inside and all the way down through here. Uh, to make sure that it keeps the heat in as much as possible. Uh, that's actually quite important because this container actually gets pretty hot. They're relying on the fact that this will heat up just as much as inside the oven and switch this on and off. So it's a really dodgy sort of setup, but I guess it sort of works. And the case is so thin that you can bend it. It's probably only around about one mil thick. So very dodgy for 30 odd bucks, you, you're getting the heating elements and a bit of a case. So anyway, uh, let's fire this up and see how it goes. So uh, Doofus here managed to break the thermocouple. Fortunately I have another one, so I'm going to have to replace it. Okay, so it looks all a little bit dodgy, but really all I'm interested in is just a proof of concept. So I've got uh, Sion's Reflow Master there. I have the SSR. I have the uh, <laughs> I have the really dodgy K-type thermistor there connected up, and it's all contained within the oven. It's dodgy, yes, at the moment. So let's fire it up and see what happens. Okay, so I'll start off with an oven check, I think and see how this little baby actually does behave. So the SSR is fired. It should be now just adjusting the temperature. I'm using this as a safeguard should I have any sort of runaway temperatures. It's supposed to be warming up. Okay, so it's starting to feel the temperature just warming up slowly. The oven's exposed, so it's gonna lose a heck of a lot of heat, so it's not a particularly good test but anyway we'll see how it goes when there's no cover on it so we managed to get up to temperature fairly easily and this is just confirms my test that I did adding the fan of course is a very simple thing that'll just help with getting that temperature under control so nice this oven's a bit of a goer okay so this uh, video was originally going to be published last week but um, with all my dental issues of just been going through uh, I didn't really get around to doing it and you would have noticed that there's two packages that I missed out opening. One of them is an SBC and the other one is a real doozy. I've been really itching to open it, but I really didn't get a chance to do it. So anyway, uh, that about wraps it up for this mailbag. Uh, there'll be another video next weekend. 
I don't know what it's going to be, but it'll be something. Maybe I'll speak to my patrons and get them to uh, suggest something. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week. Track Ritz down to two. Click on the link in the description below to check them out. Click on the link in the description below to check them out. What even are Goldfingers or a penalisation service? <laughs>